go and do lally or something. People are only just taking down their Christmas lights. I mean, there isn't even Easter eggs in, in the stores. It, I mean, it is only March, isn't it? But the garden thermometer is reading 30 degrees. I, I, I think I, think I, need, I need my head checking. It, what's going on? It's, it's March. It's March. I'm, I'm, I'm losing the plot. I really am. I, I think... I, 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 I don't know. What's going on? It's crazy. I mean, if I was in England, I'd go get a new thermometer or something. What's going on? It's mad. In France, and in probably other countries as well, you get something called cluster flies, and they hide in the walls. And here you go. That one's alive. And they sort of come out as soon as it gets warm and they sunbathe on the windows and these ones have probably come from another room and what you got to do now is welcome to our little friend Henry and this hole here in the wall is probably one of the places they're getting in and uh, we saw a huge hole on the outside last year where they were getting in and as you can see they're all sunbathing on the floor some of them are dead some of them are alive and as you can see they're all swarming around and they're also on the window here so yeah we've got quite a problem in this room because this room is absolutely buzzing they're everywhere on the floor in here and they're everywhere in the air so and this is the room I'm working in so it's quite annoying at the moment. Mandy's doing a grand job of sweeping up and that is about 10 hours worth of flies because I swept up last night. Yuck. I hate this. <laughs> you do hate it, don't I you? I do hate it. I hate it. I, I think, you, think our neighbours could hear <laughs> <laughs> you, you earlier. And they, they're, they're currently in Provence. <laughs> So, I've basically, I've put some um, jointing tape up, and now I'm putting the plaster over it. Yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll sand it down and then put another coat up. Yeah. But... And then I, I'll go over the top for you. Oh, but it's... I, I don't know what it is. I don't know why I detest it so much. Yeah. But I do. I think everyone around here knows quite a bit about why, because you've been a bit vocal. I have. I've cursed. A, a little bit. A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> oh dear. You've been very loud. I have. Yes. I apologise everybody in France. Yeah. But no, so yeah, so that's what I'm currently doing at the moment. I'm halfway there. Um we'll get there. Yeah. I'll try and not swear so much now. Yeah, please. <laughs> Yeah. Your sensitive ears. My poor sensitive ears. <laughs> uh. <sighs> the faux bois wood panelling on the bottom half of the room is, well, just over half of it is completely done, and the MDF for the rest of it is done as well, but the rest of it is going to have to wait because I'm going to plaster the top half of the room now. These walls are made with handmade bricks. Each one is a different size, not even rectangular to be honest. And uh, yeah, they're different thicknesses and not even level and stuff like that. And here is one, uh, Bouda Tuilière, a Cressat. Now Cressat, it's not far from here, probably a five uh, minute drive. Uh, Tuilière is someone that makes roof tiles. Um, so yeah, and the actual place uh, that this brick was made, we've driven past it. It's now just a cottage and they've got vegetables growing in the garden. So Boudar, that's the family name. Uh, so this would have been made 130, 150 years ago. And uh, it would have been made in something that looks a bit like a little sort of um, beehive shaped bread oven. And it's still there in, in the garden. So yeah. Yeah, little handmade brick and when you make it wet uh, it's definitely not designed for outdoor use it soaks up water like a sponge and uh, it just crumbles in your hand so yeah not the strongest brick in the world yeah 
yeah, if, if I dropped this now, because I've just picked it up from the garden, it would crumble. Yeah, so yeah, definitely not up to modern day standards, I don't think. So yeah, an old, old brick. That's the first section of wall done at the top. And I've only put one coat of plaster on. And that brings us to the issue. I'm not very good at putting it on flat. And if I put a straight edge on, yeah, it's not perfectly level, is it? So it's only sort of like a fraction out. I mean, that's less than one millimeter of dents, but yeah, they're still dense. So I'm gonna put a wet coat on now and I'm gonna get all those dents out. I've applied a second coat of plaster to my wall and where there's a white patch on the wall, it's absolutely rock solid and there's no air gaps in, in the uh, plaster. But if I move it over to where there's a black patch on the wall, it rocks like that. Now you're probably asking, what are the black patches? Now, in kind of bodywork, you have something called a dust coat. And you get a black aerosol and you cover the whole surface area of your wall or your car in a sort of like a very dusty black coat. And then you get a long board long sander and you just lightly sand the whole wall with a bit of 40 grit sandpaper and I just went sand 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 and just took a real light skim over the whole wall and uh, yeah didn't take any plaster off really so to speak whatsoever and because uh, well plaster is still a little bit damp to be honest so it would have clogged up the um the sandpaper real quick and um, it's left these low patches where well, they're not really that low to be honest they're probably I don't know 0.1 uh, I don't know 0.2 in you know a couple of areas probably here well this, this bit I think here is probably the deepest pet patch actually um, yeah so they're not deep deep but they might do with a little, little tiny skin. Um, so yeah, I don't know really why I'm worrying because this wall behind me is well, it is absolutely terrible. And these are the original walls from the um, the house. I mean, these were done, I don't know, best part 120, 130 years ago. So, yeah, when the house was originally built. So my wall is going to be an order of magnitude better than the original. So, yeah, I mean, this is going to be practically um, mirror smooth. It's just that if this was like a shiny gloss black limousine or something like that out in the gloss black sun, it would really, really show up. It's not, but you know, I'd like it a little bit better than it is. So, um, yeah, I mean, it might even have wallpaper over the top. I don't know yet. We haven't decided until we're in, you know, the DIY store choosing what we're going to do with this room. I don't know, but I'd like it a little bit better than it is. So, yeah, I'm going to put a little skim over the top and uh, get it a little bit better. So it is going to have a third coat. I've decided. This is just the... Uh top skim. I'm just trying to put a really wet sloppy coat over the top. It's actually pretty flat and there's probably only a half a mil difference over the whole thing and uh, so what I'm doing is I'm literally just putting a really wet sloppy coat of 
plaster over the top and now I'll just uh, run the trowel over it and um, it's too wet to put the on with the trowel it won't stay on with the uh, trowel so I'm using this giant spatula if you like to put it on and then I'll, I'll run the uh, trowel over the top and um, then after a couple of minutes I'll sponge it down I don't know if, the, if it's the right technique but it's my technique I've not looked on YouTube or anything like that it's just the way I'm doing it and I don't care it seems to work With its third coat, there's absolutely no air gaps along the ruler now, so I'm pretty chuffed that do me. We really need to get the hole in the wall plugged up because that is just three hours of flies. I mean, look at it all. Look at them in there. Oh my heavens. Can you see where I've been plastering? Yeah, you can see the outlines of the bricks a treat and that's the moisture coming through from the wet plaster. Amazing, eh? This is our lovely Atang, or lake pond, mini lake pond as we like to call it. In this corner would be a load of uh, water lilies with lovely um, white and yellow and pink flowers and bulrushes, but they're all dead. And here are uh, uh, water reeds and we get sort of probably about I don't know four different species of water reeds and uh, the water at the moment is rather murky and quite low for this time of year considering the amount of rain that we've been having although this year has been quite a mild winter actually and as I come down to this end of the lake it's looking particularly well grim really although there's quite a lot of frog spawn here at the moment but virtually no signs of frog which is really unusual uh, last year at this time there was an awful lot of frogs here it was teeming jumping with frogs of all sizes all colors um, yeah yellows greens um, really vibrant colours, browns, uh, toads, frogs. Yeah, it was absolutely, you know, if you got this close to the water, it would almost boil, you know, with jumping frogs and that leaping everywhere in all directions. And you get snakes swimming across. And uh, yeah, it was just a chorus of frogs. Now up here is our ancient well, um, probably about 2,000 years old. There's sometimes sort of ancient markings that appear, um, but you only see them when it's really wet weather, the markings. And uh, come across here, and again, there's, um, we get the odd carp that appear, and uh, they, come, they come in through uh, an old tunnel, which is over there somewhere, and it's fed from an ancient spring up there and there's another uh, river outlet there so we're not quite sure where the carp come in and we get these fish that are about eight or ten inches long with these bright orange fins on the side so yeah there are fish in here but they 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 used to hide underneath the water lilies under the far side but they've got no shelter now so you know we don't see them anymore and uh, that brings us to the problem, basically, koi poo. Yeah, about September last year, koi poo appeared. And as cute as they are, 
they are quite a problem. What they basically did is uh, about there, that's basically where sort of like cows and stuff like that come down to have a little bit of a uh, drink out the river and the deer come down and drink out out the little stream and uh, from the lake pond. And uh, they made sort of like a little nest in the um, the the holly bush and along the bank and they stripped all the reeds and the lilies from all around the, the side of the pond uh, the lake pond or whatever you want to call it all down this side they stripped all the lilies all the bulrushes all the reeds basically all the shelter for the ducks um the herons stopped coming the kingfisher stopped coming all the bird life stopped coming all the dragonflies disappeared we used to get hundreds of dragonflies at a time they all disappeared in a space of one or two weeks the pond life died overnight it was quite devastating for the pond life and the tunnel what feeds the pond got blocked so the water level for the pond dropped as well overnight and instead of all the water coming into the pond it bypassed and went straight into the road so it was quite devastating for the pond yeah so it had quite a really bad effect on the pond as you can imagine so yeah it was bad for the pond really bad for for our little pond so you know um as cute as they are they had a terrible terrible effect on all the other creatures that use this pond really and all the other sort of like the plant life and everything around this pond so yeah when they appeared in september last year they've now appeared in march this year so we can't really do anything about it but yeah we could try and clip the the holly bushes and the um the trees back but i don't think that's going to stop anything so yeah it's just an unfortunate invasion really if you wonder why we haven't been posting, it's because Mandy has asked me to fix her lawnmower. The blade is so bent and rusty, it's actually sheared off three of the engine mounts that were holding the engine in. And the engine was just flopping around in its holding. And uh, yeah, it's started to sort of like destroy sort of various bits of the plastic mounting and cut into the rubber sort of like... Uh, belt and things like that and the belt wasn't even running on its pulley it was running sort of like on its sort of sort of spindle and things like that so now i've got to put new sort of like engine bolts in and stuff like that Ah, oh, the poor old thing's like nearly 30 years old and like the wheels don't even point forward anymore they point in all directions so yeah i think we need a new end uh lawnmower ah oh, the poor old thing yeah, and she's had me assembling her greenhouse, which was probably first built in the 1970s and has followed us through several of our houses. So, yeah, she's had me doing things like that. It's sounding a bit rough. There's the other bolt. Move, move it out of the way, back it up. That's the other bolt. So we found the two bolts that, which were in it. The, it. the two engine mounts. We found the two bolts which were holding the engine in.
It's not the healthiest, is it? Is you pleased with your new toy? I am, yes. Yeah. Um, the other one had disintegrated and was, well, well past its sell by date. Yeah, just a little. Yeah, so we've had a good mooch around, gone around half a dozen shops, and uh, this seems the best of the lot so far. Yeah, it was cheap. Well, I'm not spending a fortune. No. Um, I haven't got a fortune to spend. <laughs> no. Actually. But yeah, for, for what, what this will do. This will yeah. yeah. Well, the, the last one went top of the range, but it lasted, what, 30 years? No, so, no, I'm 30 years, so if this does the same, we'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's got quite a good spec, so. Yeah. yeah. No, we'll and it's guaranteed for two years. Whether that means anything, we don't know, but. No, but we'll get it home, fill it with oil, and uh, give it a test drive. Yeah. Progress on the room has been a little bit slower than expected, but basically because we've been enjoying the weather really, haven't we? Yeah, I've been outside in the garden, getting the veg started, doing the veggie beds. Yeah, cleared a lot of the wall and got all the brambles away. Yeah. So that was, well, a real good bonus for us. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, the flies in this room have been a, oh, such a pest, really. <laughs> yeah, oh, I couldn't stand the flies, no. but yeah. Starting to get the hang of plastering. You've done really well, actually, yeah. really nice smooth I've got, the, I've got the wrong plaster. The plastering but i'm starting to get the hang of using yeah. the wrong plaster yeah so yeah getting there with that so yeah hopefully next couple of weeks the weather's the temperatures are dropping because they've been close to, well a few days they've been like up around the 30 degrees so yeah summer weather yeah, summer weather which is like freaky so but the next week it's dropping well a fair bit no, yeah i think it was free, freezing last night wasn't it yeah so, well, close to freezing, but um, during the day, it's still like 20 degrees. But yeah, the, the nightly temperatures drop. Mm. But So the plan is to... Um, I'm attacking those two walls yeah, for next week. That will stop the holes where the flies are coming in, and that's really important for us. So Yeah, I've, uh, I've got to remove the bricks that are laden with tar. Yeah, for the um, chimney. And then, yeah, get the uh, cement mixer going and uh, let's let's get the walls done. Yeah, so that yeah. will be a huge yeah, job. Make, make a big difference in here. Yeah, so that's quite important. Yeah. And, um, yeah, onwards and upwards, really. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So, as usual, folks, give us a bit of the old like and subscribe. He does like that. I and, does love a bit of that. And a bit of a comment, please. We yeah. do like reading those. Yeah. We, yeah. we try and answer all of them, um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not the fastest. <laughs> no, we really aren't, but yeah. yeah. So, yeah. until next time. Au revoir. Au revoir.